Since getting back into the Mac, I've had to relearn Mac OS. It's been almost five years since I've used a Mac. Uh, so having to relearn the whole system again uh, has been a bit of a journey. Uh, but throughout that, I have learned a lot of tips and tricks. So I figured I would make a video uh, talking about, you know, some basic Mac OS stuff all the way to some advanced Mac OS tips and tricks that I've learned. I've heard from a lot of you all that have been longtime viewers of the channel that use iPads, that love iPads, but have also gotten back into the Mac with the addition of the M1 Macs. So I figured this would be a really interesting video. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's start with Finder. In Finder, there are two view settings I always want on. So under view, I turn on the show path bar. This gives you the path to the file or folder that you have selected. If you right click on this, you can quickly copy that path or open that folder in terminal. The second is show status, and this is also under view. This shows the status of the drive you are on. This is really handy if you need to keep an eye on how much space you have left on that selected drive. You can also select the default view style for Finder. First, pick the view you like, then click the menu button, show view options, then check the buttons that say always open and browse in. In the same window, you can also increase the font size in Finder. You can edit what's in the Finder sidebar by going into Finder, Preferences, Sidebar. One of my favorites in this selection is the shared folder. This shows all the shared files and folders you have in iCloud Drive. There's different sections based on who originally shared the folder or file. In Finder Preferences, you can enable icons for the drives that are attached to your computer or servers you are connected to. I found this extremely handy after I built my NAS, so this way I can quickly see if the NAS is mounted to my computer, and then I can quickly access those drives right from the desktop. You can right click on the desktop and select show view options to edit how this is displayed. In Finder, just like Safari, you can have multiple tabs. With a Finder window open, you can hit Command T and this will open another tab in Finder. Now, this actually works for a lot of Apple's built-in apps like Terminal or Pages. So it's a really handy tip just to you know try in any given app that you're in. Let's talk about Quick Look. Quick Look is one of my favorite features in Mac OS. If you have a file selected, you can hit the space bar and it'll open up a preview of that file. So if this is a PDF document or a text document, you will see the text of the document. You can read it right from Quick Look. With Mac OS Monterey, you can now actually select the text from a PDF document in Quick Look. This wasn't available before. So you don't have to OCR a document anymore to be able to copy text out of a PDF. You can just hit the space bar, select it, Command C, and it's copied right to your clipboard. Also with PDFs in Quick Look, you can now annotate them and sign them right from Quick Look. You just hit the annotate button and you can make any changes you want. With video files, you can trim them, so you can cut them down to a smaller scale. This is something you could do in QuickTime as well, but doing it right from Quick Look is just quick. If you have Quick Look open, you can hit Command-O and it will open right into the default application for that file. So if you need a little more control over that file than what Quick Look can give you, there's a quick way of opening it. This video is sponsored by Drafts. Drafts is one of my absolute all-time favorite applications. Drafts is a text editor that supports different syntax highlighting like Markdown or Task Paper. I use this for writing notes, thoughts, long form writing, grocery lists, j just about anything that I write down, I write in, in drafts. The core idea behind drafts is it's a fast place to capture any note, thought, or idea. Now, drafts is available on the Mac, iPhone, and iPad, but also the Apple Watch. So no matter what platform I'm on, I can quickly just jot down anything that pops into my head. Now, what's cool about Drafts is it has the ability to use custom actions. So these are actions that you can either make or you can get from the Drafts directory that the community builds. And you can use these actions to format text, send text to other apps, just do a whole bunch of different things with it. Now, these actions are based off things like JavaScript or shortcuts, but if you don't wanna build your own, Drafts has a really great directory of actions that you can go to and download all sorts of different ones. It has hundreds of different actions in here for all sorts of different apps and formatting options. You can just search for whatever you want and there's a really good chance something will come back. 
And if you find yourself struggling to get started with drafts, there is a community forum that you can jump into, read up on drafts, ask questions. Like I said, drafts is one of my all time favorite applications. I use it to write everything down, notes, scripts, tasks, whatever. Drafts is truly the Swiss army knife of text. I will put a link in the description below to where you can check it out. And my thanks to drafts for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's talk keyboard shortcuts. One of my all time favorite ones, but I always struggle remembering it is command shift option V. Now this gives you paste and match style. I use this a lot for email. So if I copy something off the web and you just, you know, hit command V, it will paste the rich text version of that text. So it won't match the rest of the format of my email, whether that's color, font, size, whatever. So if you hit command shift option V, this will paste and match the style of your email or whatever you're pasting it into. In Safari, Command L will jump right to the URL box and select the text. This way you can just start typing and type in a new search or type in a new URL. Command W closes tabs across the system and Command Shift W closes a window. But I don't think a lot of people know this next one. Command Shift T reopens a window. One of my all time favorite keyboard shortcuts that I use every single day is Command K. This will quickly connect you to a server. So it brings up the dialog box. You can type in the path to your server or shared folder, hit enter, authenticate, and it connects. Next, let's talk about QuickTime. QuickTime is the video player built right into Mac OS. I already mentioned that you can trim video files right in QuickTime, but with Mac OS Monterey, they brought the ability to change playback speeds in QuickTime. So you can speed up a video if you just need to, you know, browse through something really quickly. But one of the things that I have used for a very long time is in QuickTime, you can do screen recordings. This is incredibly handy. So you can actually record your Mac OS screen and do tutorials or whatever you want with it in QuickTime. You can also set it up to record a web camera or an external microphone. I use this a lot from when I was podcasting back in the day. In the shortcuts app, when you have a shortcut open, you can go into file, and then select add to dock. This will move a shortcut to your dock. Now you don't actually have to keep it here. You can remove it from the dock, but what this does is it makes that shortcut now searchable. So if you use something like spotlight or Alfred, when you hit command space, you can type in that shortcuts name and it'll show up right from spotlight or Alfred or whatever app you use for searching. Full screen mode is an interesting feature. I don't know a lot of people that use it, but for me, I actually find it quite useful because it hides a lot of the distractions that Mac OS has. It hides the dock, it hides the menu bar, and you're just focused on one or two applications like the iPad. And that's something I do like about the iPad. If you hit the green button, an app will go into full screen mode. Hover over the green button to get full screen options. You can then create split view pairs like you can on the iPad hover over the green button in full screen mode to replace or change up the application pair. You can drag the center pill icon to change the layout size. This is actually a lot more granular than iPad OS. It's not limited to like a one third, two third view or a half and half view. In system preferences, mission control, you can set up hot corners. When you drag your mouse into these corners, they will trigger different actions. I have these for quickly jumping to my desktop, screensaver and notification center. I didn't want to go too overboard in this tips and tricks video. I have a bad habit of doing that in other kinds of tips and tricks videos. So let me know if you like this video in the comments below and I can do more of them in the future. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.